Good morning. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Good morning, everybody. I'm so happy to have everybody here today. It's exciting to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? God is good, so good. Well, today I have the honor of doing the call to worship. And this is the verse that the Lord put on my heart this morning. Um, I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation, but it's uh, Second uh, Corinthians 4.18. It says, so we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. Um, Today's focus is on missions, and um, to be a missionary is to be kingdom-minded, where um, you're not focused on the lack of what somebody does or doesn't have, but you focus on the love, loving the people. Um, the only thing that truly matters is the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not our responsibility to rescue those that we feel have less. It is, however, our responsibility to be love and to make disciples in all the nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. To meet those needs is awesome and is amazing, but to change their life is eternal. The things of this world are just temporary, but the gift of life, capital L life, is everlasting. So be intentional to point others to the cross, for he is truly the only way, the truth, and the life. And nobody gets to heaven but through him. Let's pray. God, you are amazing. I just want to take time to just breathe you in. Feel your Rema breath just breathing into my lungs and exhaling you out this morning. God, I want to clear my mind. Help us to get our eyes fixed on you this morning. Get our hearts in a posture that is ready to hear from you. Bring clarity today, God. Lord, I pray for every need that every person came into the sanctuary with. There's not one thing that's happening in our life that you are not fully aware of, that your majestic hands are not working out all things for good to those who are called according to your purpose. Help us with our unbelief. Help us with not understanding that your ways are higher than our ways. Help us when we feel like we're not um, being justified or, or things are not going the way we want them to go. Help us to understand, God, that we need to lean on you. For you are love and you are sovereign. And I praise you for that, God. I exalt you this morning. May you be high and lifted up, lifted up above every need that is here represented today, God. That no matter where we are walking in this path of life, that you would always have a praise on our lips continually. Rather we're in the mountain or the valley, may we continue to praise your name. For in praising your name, Jesus, is where people are drawn to you. When they see that you are working all things out, when our life looks disastrous and a mess, that's what draws them to you because they know we don't draw on our own power, but we draw from your power. So, Father God, I praise you. I thank you that you are the meat and the potatoes and the milk for every person in here, that you meet us right where we are. You see us like through transparent tape, but yet you still love us. I thank you for bringing um, 
the Rodriguez's here today safely. We pray that as they go out, they would continue um, to speak into your kingdom and share what you're doing in and through their lives as they are just mere vessels, vehicles that are being used by you. Today, may that bring some inspiration into somebody's heart and life today in this sanctuary to understand that we're all in this together. Nobody walks this path out alone. But our life should always exude you and point others towards you. Forgive us when we fail. And thank you that you are a God who lifts and picks us up. Be with the remainder of this service, God. Thank you so much for giving us today to just love and honor you. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. How are we doing today? Good. We got a good service going. We got a, uh, some special guests with us, Roberta and Risa, uh, here to share about what they do and how much they impact um, our missions field. And uh, we just wanted to kind of give you a taste of how we do worship services when we're down in Mexico. Uh, so we kind of broke it down a little bit, going to do a little acoustic set. So, um, but let's stand and let's worship this morning. The splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice All the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice he trembles at his voice how great is our god sing with me how great is our god oh we'll see how great how great is our god in his hands beginning and the end beginning and the end the Godhead three in one Father, Spirit, Son the Lion and the Lamb the Lion and the Lamb Is I 
Good morning. Good morning, Sabrina. Um, I know that I have Pastor Tony would like. I know Miss Becky Ramsey wanted to make an announcement. Offering will be in just a second. So, somebody want to wrestle Pastor Tony down? Don't know where she is, but she's up next. Any other announcements? Yes. Go ahead. Come on up here, my dear. So we have Tony, Becky, and Shannon that will be giving some announcements out. Here you go, my dear. Oh, good morning. How's everyone doing? Oh, come on. How's everyone doing this morning? What an awesome praise and worship set. I know um, it, it blessed my heart this morning. Um, and those were around me over here today. Um, you guys were doing some awesome worship today. Not, not saying you guys weren't or anything, but I was like over here, man, you guys were turning it up. I was liking it. Whew, bless my heart. Okay, so for those who wanted to be involved in the Lyrical Worship Project, project Cover the Earth, um, we are going to be starting practice on that this Wednesday from 6.15 till 6.45. And then, um, can I share? <laughs> Wednesday night, um, my my pastor came up to me and said, hey, are you familiar with this song? And I'm like, I'm like, mm, I'm not sure. And then everybody's like all around me was like, yeah, yeah, I've heard it, I've heard it, I've heard it. Um, I invite you guys, October 27th, which is the Sunday before Halloween. Um, pastor Jay has, has challenged me and um, I, I think we're like this close to like getting it all together, right? We're like little. Um, we have a special presentation for you guys. Um, I got excited uh, so much that I ran to this one person that I know, and I was all like, hey, can you help me with this, this, and this? And she was just like, <laughs> I got it. So um, we're going to have a special presentation for you guys on Sunday, October 27th. Be praying, because for my pastor to come to me and, and share this with me, I, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit, ooh. I wasn't expecting that. So, but I encourage you guys, October 27th, um, be here because um, we got something special for you. And then again, lyrical worship um, for the Cover the Earth Project. We're going to be starting this Sunday, uh, not Sunday, but this Wednesday, 6.15 to 6.45. So, you next. Tech. <laughs> um, good morning. So, the fall festival is coming up in two weeks from yesterday. We have almost almost all spots filled but if you have not signed up to help we still need help for games food there's a lot going on that day prayer tent um, see me after service I would love to talk to you and get you signed up to plug you in someplace to help um, and then we'll be setting up on Friday night I'll have people starting to show up around six o'clock I'll have some pizza to feed you if you like pizza and um, so then we'll set up on Friday night and uh, look forward to having everybody we're gonna have like Last year we had 1,500 people come across this place, and it's a big missional outreach. And then Sunday night, next week, Sunday night, 6 p.m., we will have our final meeting. So everybody come next Sunday night to join us and get all the final details, and we're going to have a time to cover our land and pray over it for the people that will be coming. 
If you have been around the Church of the Nazarene for a while, you would know that September is Alabaster Month. And Alabaster is the offering project that we do to um, raise buildings across the mission field. And, um, but we didn't want it to compete with our faith promise, so we are going to have our Alabaster Church out next Sunday. We're going to do some, you know, we're always a church that does things differently. We're going to take our alabaster, so don't. If you've been collecting in your alabaster box, you may bring those in. If you didn't, you can bring a check, cash, we'll take it all, and um, then we will send that uh, into the general church to help with the building of buildings. You know, you can come up with all kinds of creative ways to have God give you extra money. When my boys were growing up, I would say, because they would never clean their pockets out, my husband included, I would find money in the, in the washing machine and every bit of money went in the alabaster box. In fact, I kept it right in the laundry room. And one time, I happened to clean out Scott's Sunday jeans after the laundry and there was a big wad of money. And I went and I told him, I said, I just want to thank you for being so generous to the missionaries. And he said, wait a minute, that's my tithe. <laughs> so I gave it back to him. He didn't have to do a double tithe. But you can, I've had people say that they would tell God that the, any money they picked up as they were walking out in the streets. And they said, suddenly they started collecting a lot more money. God would make sure it was dropped. I found a $5 bill when I was out walking this summer, and it went in the alabaster box. So give God a creative way to help you raise a little bit of extra money and have it go towards buildings on the mission field. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, they're out in the vestibule. There are alabaster boxes out there. And if you haven't been collecting, you can take it and start collecting for the next time. We usually collect in September and February. Those are the two alabaster months. But this time, we're going to collect it in October. Go figure. Money laundering in a good way. <laughs> um, we're going to... Takes a minute for some. <laughs> um, as we go to prayer, there's a, a lot of things on our hearts and our minds. Some of the things that have been brought to my attention. Um, Pastor Jay told me that Jan was in the hospital this week again with some issues. Um, we just need to pray for them. They've been through a lot. Um, and when it's hot out, Pastor Ken has a lot of breathing issues. Um, if you haven't heard, Marie Lovett is in the hospital and they're trying to figure out what's going on. They're really not sure. Um, we have a mission trip coming up in December and there are a lot of people ha struggling to find the finances to go. So be praying that the Lord will work all that out. Um, pray for our, our feeding ministries. We just lump it under one instead of saying all of them because it's easier. Um, the next weekend, if you haven't noticed, didn't know this, the pastors and their wives are going on a retreat um, I think it's really awesome that our district is putting together things to where our pastors of our district can get away and get fed. Because if you know anything about Pastor Jay, he doesn't stop. Sometimes the good Lord has to give him a back issue to get him to stop and rest and take some time. Sometimes that doesn't even work. But next weekend, we're going to get away and uh, get some uh, feeding uh, from the Spirit. Um, Giles, we keep praying for Giles with his uh, kidney stuff going on. Um, if you didn't know, the one sur the surgery, they took out 50 kidney stones out of one kidney. And one is still there. And they're not even touching the other one yet. He said there's about as many in the other one. Um, and since w today is, um, we have missionaries with us really cool people if you didn't know I would like for us to emphasize praying for the missionaries who take time out of their lives and do things that, that God has called them to do but I'd like to pray especially for those that are in the certain countries that we can't mention because they're putting their lives on the line to do what God has called them to do they could be killed if they were found out 
So uh, just pray for that. And um, if you, we're going to have another offering, a deputation offering that's going to go directly to our missionaries this morning later on. So if you have that, just hold it. But if you're putting it in together, that's fine. Just make sure you mark it appropriately. So with that being said, let us go to prayer and pray for the movement of the Spirit today. Father God, we thank you and we praise you and we lift your name on high today, Lord God, because we know that nothing happens in this church without your leading. Lord, we are so in tune with what you would have us do. We want you to be the leader. We want you to be the guidance. We want you to have your finger on the adjustment to where we're focused, Lord, because if we're not going in a direction that you want us to go, we ask, we give you permission to focus us, adjust our scope, so to speak, Lord God, so that we are pinpointed to the direction that you would have us to go. Lord, I pray for all those that, uh, that are sick and afflicted, Lord God. There's a lot of them. I just pray, Lord God, that you make yourself known in a special way in those situations, Lord God. Let them know that you're going to hold them. You're going to carry them through. You're going to do what you do best. Lord God, we pray for the mission trip coming up. There are, there are several families that are having a difficult time raising the, the money due to numbers or job uh, losses or what have you. I pray, Lord God, that you just bring it about in such a way, Lord God, because this doesn't happen without you. We are leading, go, going by what you lead us to do. I pray, Lord, for um, the missionaries all over the world, Lord God, because they are taking... Uh, a step out of normal life, what we would call, and stepping into uh, being a missionary, Lord. It's, it's, it's an odd profession. Some of them don't get paid. Some of them do get paid, but it's not enough, I believe. Lord God, they are stepping out in faith and asking you to provide for their needs and provide for their everything that they could ever want to do in the mission field. I pray, Lord, that you open doors and, and you help them to go through those doors by faith, Lord God, to, to carry the cross of salvation and the promise of, of a better life. Not that it's going to be easy, but, Lord, that you're going to help us through. I pray, Lord, for your guidance. I pray, Lord, for your direction. I pray, Lord, for your blessings on the rest of the service. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, ushers, could you come forward, please? for the offering. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity that we can reinvest into souls for the kingdom. Some people don't understand what offering is all about. In a short sense, it's an investment because you want the family of God to be as big as possible. You want everyone to have that opportunity. And Lord, for nothing more, nothing less, I pray that you help us to understand and teach us that the offering is an investment in kingdom. It's an investment in lives and souls. It's an investment in ministries to do exactly that, to invest into lives so that they may see the light of salvation. I pray, Lord, that you bless this offering and bless it abundantly and bless it, Lord, so that it furthers your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Rachel, are you in here? Okay. Um, yes. So um, I'd like to introduce this morning our very special extended family members who still happen to put up with us. They are our uh, rule keepers, if you will, for our groups uh, whenever we go on trips because we are wild and rowdy and they, they keep us in check and, and always make sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Um, they are very, very dear friends of ours. And if you'll notice, the theme for this year's Faith Promise is bridging borders by building relationships. And they are going to come and share how... Um, they do that in the mission field and how Obet's Church of the Nazarene is a part of that, of, of continuing developing relationships with those that um, are part of the global community, not, not just in a different country, but they're a part of the body of Christ as well. Um, but we have a special um, something 
for the family. So if the whole Rodriguez family could please come up, I would appreciate that. And then I'm going to turn it over to um, Rachel. Rachel takes care of teaching the kids every month a mission service. She teaches them about missions every month, and she has a special presentation this morning. All right, so like she said, our children, and these are our little ones, not necessarily even our youth, not that they're not involved in their own stuff, but I get to go work over with the kiddos next door, um, and they just continue to blow me away with their passion and missions, and um, for the church as a whole, and kind of telling you guys, for those that don't know, we, we want to emphasize that there is no age limit, no um, boundary to being involved in missions, whether it's getting to go, you know, travel far away or it's doing stuff local. And I, again, I've, I've kind of mentioned this in other times I've made announcements. Um, I'm continuing to be blessed by the fact that our church is so invested in our different levels of missions. Um, so one of the things is our kids wanted to present you. Um, there was a rumor that you guys are going on vacation um, here soon. So hopefully that rumor traveled correctly. Um, and so the kids wanted to gather a little gift for you guys to go on your trip. Um, and one of their favorite things that kind of worked out, one of their favorite things is always to ask me what we're having for snack during missions service naturally. Um, so we have created this big awkward bag is actually a cooler book bag. Um, and so one of our thoughts was, is while you guys are on your little vacation, I think it's to a beach, is that correct? Okay. Um, so in my mind, I envisioned you guys having a lovely little picnic together as a family to get to have that opportunity to fellowship and snacks. Um, so there are some preloaded snacks in there. Um, I do believe there's two of you that are gluten-free, right? So we, I tried to do my best to be mindful in that. There's some snacks. Um, also, there's a gift card in there for you guys to continue to load it up with some good food for you guys to just sit. Um, and the kids each individually decorated and wrote you little cards as well to kind of look over um, while you guys are spending that time together as a family to just take some time and rest because I know you guys are continuously, I mean, everything you guys do is, is just following God and there's work and all of that. Um, and also they continuously collected some change. Don't know if you want to use those for those annoying tolls that you guys probably travel through. Um, but however you guys want to use this, this is for you guys to just take time as a family um, in our way and, and the kids way of saying thank you um, for everything that you do. And they understood, we kind of helped explain to them the impact your family has on our church and our, our ability to um, be able to do some of the missions that we do. Um, even though the kids haven't met you directly, um, getting the opportunity to see how you guys have kind of poured into um, different people in our church and our availability to get to follow God's work as well. So I wanted to give you, here's some, a lovely bag of change and this big old cooler bag. Um, you guys can fill us some yummy snacks. So thank you guys. Thank you guys very much. Thank you kids for uh, sacrificing because I know that it takes a lot to be able to give up your change when you can go and buy some candy and some other things. So thank you for what you have done. Uh, our missionary kids, thank you also, because they'll enjoy the snacks. Um, we are going on vacation um, on Tuesday. It'll be the very first time that we take really, truly a, a vacation in the almost eight years that we have been serving as missionaries. Um, and it'll be the very first time that we actually vacation in Mexico, um, which is funny because we work in Mexico but we have never vacationed in Mexico. Every, every time we go to Mexico, we work. Um, and we literally arrive, we work, and then we leave, and we continue to work in other places. Um, so this will be the very first time. Um, it took us a while because we had to save up to go, <laughs> but we made it, and we're looking forward to that time. Um, we are very, very happy and grateful to be here this morning with you guys. We do not know every one of you, but we feel like we do because we have um, served alongside you, uh, uh, quite a bit of you, for now almost eight years. This will be our eighth trip to organize for Southern Nazarene University. And so I see a lot of faces that I recognize, and I see faces that look very different because it's been eight years <laughs> and uh, we change. So I was just doing the math. Our, our oldest was six years old when we arrived to El Paso. Um, and that's been, 
she's, she'll, she's 14, she'll be 15 this year in December. Um, so that's quite a few years. And God has been good throughout those years. We want to um, just kind of brief, do some brief introductions so that you know. I know um, the team and those of you who have come know our kids and know our family. But for those of you who do not know, um, Reese is going to do a little bit of introduction for you. Okay, so we now have a 14-year-old who's going to be 15 this year. And what happens when you turn 15? You have a quinceanera. So we have that coming up this the end of the year. Um, we have a 13-year-old son. He's the middle one and a 12-year-old. So a ninth grade, 8th grade, and 7th grade. We're still homeschooling. Um, we homeschooled um, since we got to El Paso just because we're, we're on the road. And um, so they have their homeschool programs downloaded to their computers, and they, they keep up that. Um, they actually do two days per day that we do school so that we can be ahead and try to get done so that we can keep up with teams and keep doing what we're doing. But the one thing I want to say, um, just so that you know them a little bit better, that our family serves as a family, and we really appreciate that. They've always been a part of our team. Um, Ruthie is the oldest, um, and her... Her talents, her gifts that God has given her is to organize. If anybody knows her, um, that's, that's what she does. She's really, really good at it. She gives our list for our family before we go on every trip of what to pack. Helps me tremendously, especially when you're turning around and going on a ne next trip within a week's time. Uh, keeps us organized and we know what to put in our suitcases. Um, one of the, the recent ministries that we had was... Um, where we were, were putting clothes and um, one of the missionaries tried to organize a clothes closet and he came out frustrated as big black bags were coming in. He's like, I can't do it. And she's like, that's okay, I got it. Step aside, it's okay, we'll do it. And so she went in and Robert helped her get some, you know, the, the little cricket can make all kinds of fancy um, organizers, small, medium, large. So she got the, the closet up and running with it all very, very organized. And we'll see pictures of that later. Um, I'm the builder. So I had to build the closet before she hung up everything. So we got that in. Uh, Robert was in the kitchen getting every, all the food um, ready with the ladies that were helping from the church. Um, and so you, you know that he loves to cook and he's a fabulous chef. Um, <laughs> uh, Josiah, he's, he's our, our son, um, and I am thankful that God gave us a son. So um, he can lift way more than mommy can now, and so I'm always like, Josiah, come help me. And he can crawl under small spaces and put pipes together, and so um, I thank God for, for a son. Um, and our youngest loves people, loves to, to talk and, and to, to be with people. Um, he was at a conference this weekend, and she's like, Mom, I just want to be with Daddy. And I was like, why? It's like, because there's lots of people there. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's awesome when you have someone who just loves to be with people. Um, but besides that, God's given her the talent for sewing. Um, the same group that we had um, just the beginning of the year, we didn't have enough pillows um, for, for the people who are coming through and sleeping at the church. And so she's like, oh, I got this. She cut all the pillows in half, sewed them up, and we had 50 pillows, like, instantly from 20. So it was nice. It was nice to have, um, to have that talent where, where God uses even the little things that we can do um, for, for his glory. But that's our family. That's a little bit, just a little bit of who we are. Risa um, grew up in Guatemala. She's a missionary's kid. And so she didn't tell you that, but she did grow up in Guatemala and is fluent in Spanish. I grew up in South Texas on the U.S.-Mexico border. Um, and so we now are stationed in El Paso, Texas. Um, we are, this, well, February, um, we became globally commissioned missionaries for the Church of the Nazarene. And that's just a fancy title for, that means that at any point the Church of the Nazarene can say, you're moving today. And we will move you and we can move anywhere in the world. Uh, and that is what our commitment to the Church of the Nazarene is. Um, we are willing to go wherever. Um, but it was a, a great opportunity for us. It was a, 
um, how do I say, it was a confirmation from the Lord for us that the call that we received as children was a, was a true call. Even though we'd been serving and doing all that, it was just another confirmation to us that we were doing what God had called us to do and that we were being faithful to, to him, that we were using the gifts and the abilities that he had poured into us to give back to the kingdom. And so if, it was just an awesome opportunity. If you'll go on to the next slide. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is the U.S.-Mexico border, that red line that kind of runs in between. Do you see it? If you do, nod your head. If it's too small and you're squinting, you can't see it, I'm sorry. Okay, but the, the red line that kind of runs in between Mexico and the U.S. is the border. Now, question. How many or who knows how long the border is from end to end? From South Texas to California. How long? Well, yes, I know it's long. No, it's not 7,000 miles. It's not 3,500. No. Very close. Very close. It's about 1,900 miles. So you're the closest so far. Um, so we just say it's around 2,000 miles from end to end. And currently our family is really still the only family who travels on both sides of the border, the whole border, um, for the Church of the Nazarene. So we are missionaries. And here's the other thing. Uh, not only did we become global commissioned missionaries, but we were assigned to the USA Canada. So we are your very first missionaries assigned to the USA. So we're your missionaries, and we are doing the work of the Lord on behalf of you and your churches, uh, and we're excited to do that. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Border Initiative, the Nazarene Border Initiative has existed since 2006, and we are not tied to a specific district. We are tied to headquarters in, in Lenexa, Kansas now. Um, and, and we, as Border Initiative, have three things that we try to stick to. We try to encourage, empower, and equip. That's what we do. And who do we do that for or with? We do that with our local churches. We do that with our pastors, with our district superintendents. We do that with teams who come and who pour into our churches. See, our, Reese and I believe that the best way to be faithful to God is to use the gifts and abilities that God has poured into us and to give them back. Um, I remember when I first heard about missions and received my call, the, the thought of being a missionary was you have to be a pastor, right? How many remember that? Only pastors are missionaries. You remember that? But the reality is that God calls whoever he wants to be a missionary. And sometimes they're not pastors. Sometimes maybe they're IT people. And, and in the Church of the Nazarene, we have a group uh, that call themselves the Nazarene Nerds. And what they do is they're all people who are IT and they will travel the globe to our universities and to our seminaries and they will set up complete networks for these places and run wires and do everything that needs to be done so that they can too be a part of the kingdom of God, the kingdom building. Isn't that awesome? People who do finances, people on, on, on our trips that we have done, we have people who come and cut hair because they want to be faithful in using what God has poured into them. And that for me, that is awesome. Go ahead and go to the next slide. God is faithful when his uh, to his people when his people are faithful to him. So when we are faithful to God, God is faithful to us. Amen? When we are faithful to use what God has poured into us, he will bless us. And we grow and we change. Um, I say that there, the best way to, to draw closer to God is through service. Because in the midst of serving... God changes us. 
We cannot serve and not be changed. We cannot use our gifts and talents and abilities for God and not be different. God uses service to change us. And I think if you talk to any one of your people here who have been on a trip, I think they will say the same. I hope they say the same. <laughs> We're changed. We draw closer to his heart. We draw closer to his people through service. Go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, this first one, we, we want to share with you uh, this morning, not just what we do, because we do a lot of things and, and, and a little bit of every, everything, honestly. And I hope that at the end of this time together, you're not hearing, oh, this is what they do. They do this and this and this and this and this. But I hope what you hear is the story of God's people being faithful to God, using their gifts and abilities. That's what I hope you hear throughout all of these stories that we share. Come to Mex is uh, what used to be Commission Under Mexico, um, and we changed it to Come to Mex. We shortened it because we thought it would be easier for people to remember. Um, and, and we changed some of the mindset of what this trip is. This is the trip that your church participates in every year now for how many years? Ten years. We have been a part of this trip for, or have led the, trip, the organization of the trip on the Mexican side. This will be our eighth year. And your church has faithfully sent people for ten years. You, you, I, there shouldn't be quiet here right now. We should be clapping. I'm being serious. Your church has been faithful to help send people for 10 years to this trip. And so, sometimes it's easy to think, oh, it's just a trip to Mexico. We're just going to go there. But the impact that your people leave on the field is amazing. The impact that the field leaves on your people is phenomenal. See, it's service. And God changes people through service. Um, I don't know, we're gonna, I don't know if we, we can do this. If we go to the next slide, I don't know if it'll bring up or not. So we're gonna try. There was a little, hopefully this works. I'm praying it works. There's a little um, promotional video that was put together that really shares the heart of this trip, I hope. If I'm really have been happy to have a part in the Commission to Mexico. Uh, coming here uh, gives us an opportunity not only to get to know our brothers and sisters here in Mexico, but to work with them, to partner. Um, it's so important that we realize we're not here to bring them something they don't already have, but um, we come to um, take their hand to work together. Um, it's very important too that we in the States realize that our church is much larger than just our own country. Uh, we have Nazarene brothers and sisters around the world. I came with the SNU group that sponsors this. It's Come to Mex. This happens to be mission trip number 24 for me. And so over the, the years, I have had the fortunate opportunity to bring my two daughters, my son, actually my mother, my father, and my father-in-law over a period of time have accompanied me to many of the sites that we have gone to. Uh, Monterey, uh, Guadalajara here is the first time, but then also Chihuahua, Monclova, you know, I, I, I can name them, but they've all been fun and exciting. We've uh, always believed that um, if you're going to be mission-minded that um, you should be handing that um, 
concept down a generation. Uh, we never thought that there was like an age that they needed to wait until they got to to be mission-minded. Uh, uh, my daughter, I think, started when she was seven years old uh, on a trip to, I think, the Dominican. Um, so they, we started them young. Uh, that way they just they begin a lifestyle of compassion, they begin a lifestyle of that and it becomes part of, a part of who they are. Well, I think this has shaped a lot of things for me. I had never really had an exposure to what it means to be a compassionate minister before I started coming to Commission to Mexico when I was 12. Um, and ever since, ever since then, I have been on a straight trajectory towards wanting to be a compassionate minister in some capacity. Um, these multiple trips that I've been on have shown me that it is really important to be a minority at some point in your life, to step out and be someone who is different in the room, um, to learn about other people's cultures, and to, for once, do it somebody else's way. That's been really important to me, and I think that compassion for me has become something that I want to be my lifestyle, um, and I do honestly need to give thanks to Commission to Mexico for that. Hemos hecho un buen grupo eh, de trabajo. En esta mañana compartía con ellos y les decía que todos, absolutamente todos, están aportando su, su granito de arena y, y hemos hecho un buen equipo, tanto los que vienen como los que estamos recibiendo. Estamos trabajando de una manera eh, muy bonita y resalto mucho la convivencia también que se está dando, la interrelación que se está dando y creo que para nosotros, Eh, en nuestra iglesia en la Ciudad de aquí en México nos, eh, nos están dando una enseñanza grande de, de poder hacer también nosotros lo mismo, de poder invertir para poder ir a apoyar. We are here in Mezcala, Mexico, about an hour out of uh, Guadalajara with the uh, Come to Mex medical team. Um, we're here to serve them, to give them um, consultation. We have a dentist who is also seeing patients, cleaning teeth, doing extractions. Um, but it's it's been um, pretty busy here at this location and then also um, back at the Nazarene Church. Um, if we weren't here, uh, most of these people have to go by bus, uh, which is an, an hour away to the closest medical care. I really just jumped at the opportunity because this was something that like, I've never been to Mexico before and then I get to practice the skill that I will forever like, develop um, in this country. And so that kind of is what spurred it. And then so after that, uh, fundraising and then just asking people like, hey, can you help me out? Like this is something that I want to pursue and I would really think this is a great opportunity. And people were just super generous and um, we flew in, got to be here, and there's like five of us nursing students from the same class, which is really neat because we're all going through this experience together and we're bonding through it. So basically the teacher just kind of threw it out there and it, I didn't realize how great of an opportunity it was until I landed here and been with people and started working. One of the other reasons that we're here is, um, is just the, the work of Christ. When, when we touch someone physically and are able to, to give them medication or to help them physically, um, it, it really gives us permission to also speak into their lives spiritually. I think that the relationship aspect is a, is a big deal. Um, you know, we stress on these trips that it's not so important that we get the work done, um, that that's secondary to what our actual purpose is, which is to build relationships with the people, um, to meet new people, to show God's love to new people. Um, you know, as if we get the work done, that's great on top of that. Um, but we need to take the time to step back and kind of just talk to one another and get to know each other and um, just worship the same God together. So. If you have an interest in Come to Max, I greatly encourage you to come experience this experience that will change your life. If you feel a little stagnant with your Christian faith, I believe it's going to be an instant boost to your life. Um, I like to live by the quote of life begins outside your comfort zone and um, Come to Mix will definitely push you in, uh, out of that comfort zone. So if you're looking for a little excitement within your Christian faith, just to develop a little more, I definitely say take your opportunity to um, 
join us um, next year and the following years and just experience a life-changing opportunity. It really is a great trip. Um, to see how God brings his family together. Uh, our world divides us so much. And, and it just takes you turning on your TV today to see how the world tries to divide us. And, and it's so easy to make it an us and them issue with a lot of things, but especially when it comes to relationships with other countries. But what we get to do during these trips is to build relationship with our Mexican brothers and sisters. And we get to see how similar we are. We get to see that God is our father. We get to, to see that, you know what? They love their children just as much as I love mine. And that they love Jesus just as much as I do. And the Lord begins to weave his family together. And Facebook has helped, honestly, in a lot of ways because we're now able to keep touch with our new siblings that we didn't know we had, our siblings in Christ. And we have seen how through Facebook, um, each side is able to encourage the other and say, we need prayer, we're praying for you. Or we're praying for you, thank you, we needed it. And so it's just a, an awesome trip. If you've never been on this trip, um, this year, really, the, the deadline is, is uh, tomorrow. <laughs> so probably a little too late. But if you've, if you've never been and you think about it, and you're thinking about it, talk to someone from your church who has been on it and, and let them tell you how God has changed their hearts through this trip. It is amazing. And uh, we thank you again. Thank your church. Thank your, your, your group of people who continue to go faithfully. Um, it is an honor and a privilege for us to work alongside them. We don't say that they come and work for us because they don't. We work alongside them. Um, and they work alongside our Mexican brothers and sisters. And so together we form one team um, that is hoping to do its best to help build the kingdom of Christ. Amen? Amen. So give yourselves a hand and give your group a hand for, for the work that's been done these past 10 years. Um, God has used them in mighty, mighty ways. If you go to the next slide, I want to tell you about something that God is doing, because God is doing everything, right? We, we choose to be a part of what he does. We choose to say yes and to be obedient when he stirs our hearts. Um, when we arrived at the border, um, part of our job, besides work and witness and besides bringing groups to Mexico and on the border, was really to just help our, our churches and our districts along the border. Uh, on the U.S. side, we have several, I think there's six or eight districts that kind of run along the border. And in, El, in the El Paso area, um, there is the Southwestern Latin District, which is primarily a, a Spanish language district. There is the New Mexico District, and then there's the Arizona District. And these three districts historically have not worked well together. In fact, they have really not done much together. Um, by and large, in the, even in the U.S., right, in the rest of the U.S., most districts don't do much together. But because of the language, because of the cultural differences, it kind of amplified the separation. And when we got there, we saw the separation, and, and our hearts hurt for our church because we're one family. And we saw how the world had crept in and divided our family so much. And so we began praying, Lord, help us to know how to bring our family back together. And we've prayed this prayer for years now. And this past year, the Lord brought a breakthrough. And I'm not saying that we did anything because we didn't besides praying. 
But unbeknownst to us, the Lord was moving in their hearts too. And began to put that desire in their hearts too to come together as one family. And so out of this, we begin talking to the district superintendent for the Southwestern Latin District and the NMI president for the Arizona District. And out of that talk, or the talks came the Kairos Project. And the Kairos Project is a project simply to come together and to work together wherever it is that God is already working. These two districts have committed to come together. If you'll go to the next slide. Have committed to come together, to come to the table, sort of, and say, where is God moving? Where do our churches need help? And how can we form one team to breathe more life into those places? Now, you're hearing this, right? And you're probably going, yeah, yeah, that's a nice story. That's great, whatever. But I want you to understand the implications of this. Two districts from two cultures, two language bases that were divided. Horribly divided. Do you understand what I'm saying? Racially divided. And they now have chosen to be obedient to the Lord's leading. To come together, to set the differences aside, and to work together for the kingdom. Do you understand the significance of that? It's not gonna be easy. And I'm not saying that there's not gonna be feelings hurt or misunderstandings, but for two districts to put their cultural differences aside in order to work for the kingdom, only God can do that, amen? That's a God thing. And we get to be a part of that as your missionaries. We get to sit back a little bit and see God moving. God is alive and God is well and God is doing something great on the border. You've heard, I'm sure, all the things that are going on on the border, right? On the news. You've heard what just happened not a few months ago in El Paso, Texas. And I'll tell you, and I'm going to be real honest with you, the Walmart, where it happened, is about a minute or two from our house. It's the Walmart that we shop at. It's the Walmart that, had we not been there at midnight, we would have probably been there at that time when things happened. That's our place. That's our home. It's our neighborhood. And in, in the midst of all the horrible, ugly things that are happening along the border and all the things that you see on the TV of all the people and all the problems, God is alive. And I believe that God is wanting to do something great and mighty, something new, something different on the border. And something that we have been longing and praying for for years now. God has started. God is moving. Again, we just get to be a part, a small, tiny piece of that. So pray for the border. Pray for the churches. They need your prayers. Pray for these two districts, the Southwestern Latin District and the Arizona District, as they come together because Satan is not going to be happy. And he will try to destroy what the Lord has put together. They need your prayers. They need to be covered in your prayers. Because I truly believe God wants to do some amazing things through his people when his people choose to be obedient. Amen? Um, I was going to tell you, um, as right after the video, and I forgot. So... One of the privileges that we have had for the past seven years, this will be our eighth, but the, the past seven years, is not only have we worked with your team, but we have worked 
with a lady that you had here, I heard uh, not too long ago, Eileen Ruger. She was a missionary to China, came home, worked at Southern Nazarene University, and organized the trip on the American side. And I'm just, the Lord has brought her to our heart recently, and, and just as I sat there earlier this morning, she leaves for the Philippines tomorrow, the 30th. I was just checking my, my text messages from her to see the exact date. She leaves tomorrow. And so, would you pray for her tomorrow as she travels? Would you pray for her as, as the Lord has something new and exciting for her in her life? Would you commit? Raise your hand if you are willing to pray for her. Pray for her. Remember her. Leaving what you know for what you don't know is not always easy. Obedience to God is not always easy, even when you know it's the right thing to do. Pray for her. Pray that, the, that Satan would not discourage her in her times of, of, I don't know what else to do. We love her to death, and uh, we thank you, team, for loving her, too. Uh, she's an awesome lady. Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide, the next one. Uh, Reese is going to come and, and share this final story with you. Again, when God's people choose to be faithful to God, he does some amazing things. And we just want to share this last one with you, not so that you can say, oh, 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 but to say, man, God is good. God is good. So... Um, there's lots of stories that we can tell about this ministry. Um, and we were just trying to pick out some, some of the ones that, um, that you would understand. We're glad to, to go into more details, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but this ministry is called, um, Nueva Esperanza, which is New Hope. And... Uh, there's even a story behind that, which is a phenomenal one. Um, but this was a ministry to the, the immigrants who were come to our border. Um, I always, it's one of the hardest things to talk about. You can go to the next slide, why? So a lot of the things that you hear in the news are not true. It's just, it's just how it is. Um, and God laid it on our heart about um, two years ago that we were supposed to work with the immigrants that are coming to our border. And the reality is that there's been a crisis um, for years, since 2006, large amount of immigrants have been coming to our border. And God asked us to work with the people who are asking for asylum and those are, those are people who turn themselves in and they, they have a reason for coming and they, they tell our U.S. government, you know, I, I want to, to ask for refuge in your country. And what does the church do, you know, at that point? And for us, it was an easy answer. We're called to be the church. Well, what does that look like? Um, we spent a summer... Um, volunteering at um, different sites on the border, just uh, being a support to different organizations. And it was Ruth, our oldest, who says, Mom, why don't we do this in El Paso? There's hundreds and thousands of coming to El Paso. What's going on there? And so we started looking into it. And, you know, as missionaries, our, our, our job is to encourage the churches to be involved in God's work. And so what is happening in El Paso? What is, what is the church doing? And at that point, um, the Nazarene church wasn't um, 
help in any capacity in El Paso or in, in Mexico. And so we started talking to the churches, getting them together, and um, we decided that we would, we had the people, we could ask for the resources, and we would serve um, one, one uh, week a month. And then if it went well, or if people were engaged in giving, um, then we would do it more. And this picture is at one of our churches. And this, this picture also represents those two districts that we were just talking about, the districts who never got along. You've got two ladies on the right who are from the Latin district, and one of the ladies um, from the, the English district never met before January. Um, the one on the left doesn't speak any Spanish, and yet she says, I'm called, and the two ladies on this side said, I'm called to do this ministry. And so they started working in the kitchen together. Fortunada on the right, um, in the very front. She's 89 years old. And she's one of the pioneers of raising up our Spanish churches in El Paso. And, and she says, you know, she's like, this is what God wants us to do. She wants us to love his people. These people don't have food. They don't have clothes. We're not going to talk about what their situation is. We're going to love. And so she's, she would cook. She would start cooking in the morning. She had everything ready by lunch. They would come in. She's like, hey, when was the last time you ate? And usually the response was 20 hours, 24 hours ago. And so she's like, oh, sit them down. Even before orientation, let's get them fed. And she was passionate, passionate about feeding the people that came through. Um, the next slide, um, this is part of the Latin district. Uh, you can see high schoolers, moms. Um, this district, who would, doesn't have much money, gave all they had. So we had 20, 24 volunteers was the, the most we had one Tuesday that showed up. And it was on a Tuesday in the middle of the day. Um, their parents gave them permission to get out of school. They got a volunteer letter. I wouldn't recommend it for everybody. But that's how passionate they were about giving all that they had. Um, one of the guys, I don't think he's pictured in this one. We can go to the next one. Um, he, he says, well, I don't have anything. I said, your time is valuable. You know, we need people. We need bilinguals to answer phones and, and um, do all that. And so I said, just come. And so he came, but he also brought the one loaf of bread he had. And he says, this is what I'm giving today. And um, this is just the area where um, we had set up cots. And they would sleep um, overnight. Josiah would stay with me most nights when we'd just um, stay the night with them, um, get them out on their buses that, um, that were leaving or the airplanes the next day um, to wherever um, they were going. Um, but this was a, a, a unified um, time of districts, of churches, um, that's never, ever happened on the border. Um, and so we, we praise God for the opportunity. Um, I think the next picture, oh yeah, talking about Josiah getting under small places, putting the pipes, another God story where... Um, most of the people that we were serving hadn't had showers in a week or two. And, and so this church itself didn't have any showers. And so we started calling around. I was, um, we had had someone ask us if we wanted to buy a shower trailer about eight years ago. And we said no. And so as we were driving on one of our 12 hour um, drives one day, um, I was like, Robert, hey, do you remember the name of the guy who wanted to sell us a shower trailer? And he's like, oh, yeah, I think it was so-and-so. And, and I, he says, maybe I can find him on Facebook. So he Facebooks him, and he says, oh, I sold it to so-and-so. And so he contacts that guy. He actually knew him. And the guy says, oh, yeah, I'll sell it to you. And so we had a shower trailer within 
within a week and we're able to provide even showers. So this is Josiah setting up the shower trailer. You can go to the next one. So even there, God provides. And this is Ruthie getting the clothes closet organized. Um, most of the immigrants had been in the same clothes for a month. And so when they take off their clothes and they shower, they throw it away. That was, you know, that's just how bad it was. And so they were beyond excited um, to get a new pair of clothes, new underwear, socks, things that sometimes we take for granted. Um, next one. Um, but there again, just, just a picture of God's church being the church and compassion and ministry um, together. We praise God for him, for what he's doing. Um, in, in the district lives, in our lives, and, and on the border. God desires to use his people. God desires to use his people for his kingdom. And even here today, so I'm, I'm a pastor besides just being a missionary, and so I can't go away without challenging you, because then it wouldn't be a good thing. Can't, you can't leave here without feeling a little bit uncomfortable, right, Pastor? The challenge is for you today, and it's Faith Promise Sunday, is what are you willing to give to the Lord? The Lord has given so much to you. And I'm not even talking finances. It may be finances, but that's not what I'm talking about. God has uniquely poured into you certain things and those certain things i'm sorry to tell you are they're not for you those things that he has poured into you are for his kingdom for you to use for kingdom building and so as you have seen the stories or seen the pictures heard the stories i hope you have seen that when God's people are faithful to him, he is faithful to them and he will use them. And so the question for you is, what are you willing to give to God? Some of you may say, well, I can, all I do is, is just cut hair. Well, how are you using it for the kingdom? Well, all I can do is cook. How are you using it for the kingdom? An 89 year old lady, Choosing to cook because that, what, that is what she can do best. That is the picture of heaven. That is kingdom building, whether you think so or not, is giving of yourself, whatever that is, and giving it back to God and allowing him to use you in the midst of that. Our gifts and our abilities, our talents, they're not ours. They are something that he gave us. And they're not for us to keep. They're for us to freely give back. So what are you doing? How are you giving back to God what he has given to you? Let me pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today and this morning and, and the opportunity, Lord, to come, really, it feels like home in a lot of ways, to see familiar faces, to hug people, and, 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 and just to sit and talk with family. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. Lord, and I think at the heart of everything, we all desire to to be used by you. And I know the world tells us, oh, you can't, you can't. No, you can't do that. The Lord won't use that. The Lord, no, 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 you have to be this or you have to be that. But the reality is, Lord, you desire to use us with what we have, with what we have to offer. And so, Lord, I pray for this church that they would choose to continually 
to be faithful and obedient to your calling, to your nudging. That as a church, as a whole, that we would come to your feet, Lord. And just very much like the little boy who gave his fish and loaves, that we could say, Lord, this is all I have. What can you do with that? And we can sit back and see the wondrous things that you can do with what we think is so little, but in your eyes is so much. Thank you for today, Lord. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, he did a great job explaining what faith promises, so I have to completely rethink what it was, you know, what I was going to say. Um, thank you for that. Um, can you can you tell why we love them? I mean, they're yeah, yeah, they're they're um, they're awesome people. Um, we tried to get a trip together this past summer with the youth group to actually go to the border and process immigrants. We were not able to get it together. It is on the schedule for next year. I've been speaking with Savannah about it. Um, she wants to get together a group of teens to come and help and assist with that. Um, and, and tying in on that relationship aspect, you know, I, I love our, our mantra this year. Um, I love the fact that it's a Southern Nazarene trip and yet like two people from Obets are, are on the propaganda piece for um, advertising it that talks about the impact of relationships. You know, I look out here and I see Justin and Melissa love it. That's an impact of relationships. I think of Demi and Antonio, that's an impact of relationships. Caitlin and Paul, and Paul coming in and helping out with Dakota and Megan's wedding. Caitlin is still a very dear friend of ours. And, and the impact of relationships. And so it's not just going on a trip. In fact, it's not this at all and seeing about how much they don't have and how much we have. That's, that's not the point. And so when we talk about faith promise, we talk about, um, I want you guys to, I, I want your heart to be pricked. I, I don't want you to think of what you're going to give out of your abundance. You know, I don't want you to sit, sit there and think, you know what, I think I can give $20 a week. I want you to be challenged to give out of your sacrifice. Can you do that? So I'm going to pray and um, we're gonna pass out these cards and I'm actually gonna do something different. Oh, I know, oh, Sabrina's doing something different. Um, for those of you that have been on a trip before, would you mind coming up here and, and grabbing some of these pledge sheets? These pledge sheets are for you to fill out, pledging. Yes, now, please. And if you would like to participate in um, giving for faith promise, pass those out to everyone, I would like you to pledge, not to me, not to, not to Becky, not to Bob, but to the Lord. And I also want to remind you that faith promise is that it's a promise to God that this is what you're going to do. I also want to remind you that it is not your tithe. Your tithe is the Lord's. This is separate. This is above and beyond. This is maybe not getting that caramel macchiato this is maybe not going out to McDonald's three times a week. Maybe it's going twice a week. So if you would like to participate in that faith promise, would you raise your hand? We've got tons of people that are walking around that would um, like to give you one of these pledge sheets. I would encourage you to take one. If you don't know that you want to give, or if you don't know how much you would like to give, take one and take it home and pray over it. I know maybe you're like, I just now learned what faith promise is. I, don't, I have no idea what it's about. So maybe if you don't know, go ahead and take one, take it home and pray about it. Um, I'm actually going to close in prayer and then we're gonna take an offering. The offering is your faith promise pledge sheets, but also it's a deputation offering for Roberto and Risa. Are you guys still working for free? Oh, you finally get a salary? Okay, <laughs> that's great. 
We're giving them a deputation offering um, for them to use. They usually don't use it for themselves. They usually use it for like their missions or um, their medical missions, or they're gonna go to a church and see that they need a lift or a ramp or something and they're going to, they're going to use that money to do that with. So we're going to take an offering right now to, um, to take up the Faith Promise Lips and a deputation offering for Roberto and Risa. But I wanna do something different while I'm praying. Would those of you who are always my backbones and that are my faithful, that are praying for us while we were on a mission trip, I would like to call the Rodriguez family up here and I would like my faithful prayer warriors to come up here and pray over them as you do us while we are gone. So Cindy, I know you do it. Terry, come on up here, yes. I have so many of you that are here at home when we are away on our mission trip. Pastor Jay, go ahead and shimmy on up here. Rodriguez, please come up. Children, come on up. For those of you that are my faithful prayer warriors, I would like you to gather around this beautiful family here. And as I am praying for this offering and as I'm praying um, for our faith promise pledges, I would like for those of you that, have, that usually stay behind to step up and I want you to cover them in prayer. Giles. So this is my faithful. These are, this is the uh, family that stands in and prays for us while we are out on the, um, while we are out on the mission field. These are the backbone of what we do. Um, they go with us on every trip. They may not physically be there, but they go with us on every single trip. So while I pray, would you guys go ahead, Pastor Jay, go ahead and lead out in prayer. Father, I thank you so much that you have built in us the knowledge of who you are. I thank you that, that we can call out your name and you answer. I thank you right now, God, that there is someone in here that you put this number on their heart and they're freaking out about it. God, I thank you. I thank you that, that, that you are going to stretch and you are going to build your kingdom through your people who are walking in obedience right now, Father. Lord, as, as we come before you, Lord God, I thank you for this beautiful, precious family that serves humbly, willingly, and walks in obedience, Father. I thank you that we call them friends. God, I pray that you would continue to bless them as they go to the utter, uttermost parts and the far reaches of, of the earth. Father, I thank you for Obed's Church of the Nazarene, that they recognize and know that mission starts here at home. I thank you that we wanna be a part of expanding your kingdom and reaching people where they are. I thank you for all of our awesome ministries that are endeavoring to do your work. Father, I pray that you would continue to bless. I thank you that um, as we make these pledges that we are making them in faith, believing that you will be faithful to provide. I pray that you would encourage us, God, as we sacrificially give to you. God, I pray that you would continue to bless those that serve. So those that serve here while we are out doing mission work and those that are, those that are faithfully going. Father, we give you this day. In your name we pray, amen. Could you go ahead and start doing the offering, please?
bow. Dear God, thank you so much. Thank you for the call that you have in our lives to make a difference. Lord, thank you for the, the call you've placed on the Rodriguez's to make this uh, a stretch of 2,000 miles between U.S. and Mexico that, Lord, there'd be amazing work of your Holy Spirit all across that border. Lord, on both sides of that border, deep within both countries, Lord, let there be the impact of your Holy Spirit transforming lives, transforming relationships, building bridges, Lord, that, that just make all the difference for time and eternity. Today, Lord, I'm giving you thanks. Thanks for those who are willing to, to go. Thanks for those who are willing to give. Thanks for those who are willing to pray. Thank you, Lord. And I'm praying, Lord, that as we have come together the, this day, Lord, that we will just keep lifting you up, keep bringing attention to you, keep letting you shine in our lives. And we give you thanks already. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Oh, I forgot to pray for the food. Just a second. Before, before I do that, let me just say this. Um, I just heard that uh, Mike Rockhold, who is um, an uncle to Patty, or, or, or Patty, Bobby uh, Rush, 
has been taken to Mount Carmel East. Uh, they think he's had a heart attack. So let's, uh, let's remember him in our prayers. And keep praying for Marie Lovett as she's in the hospital over in Grove City. And for uh, Jan Ellis, Lord, uh, Pastor Ken and Jan, just, just pray for them much. Um, Jan is continuing, to, since she's had her heart attack a few weeks ago, she continues to have this pressure on her, her heart and in her chest and this dizziness, and they're not being able to figure out what's going on and just need, that, need the doctors to figure it out. So, so pray for them, okay? Let's pray for the food, pray for the rest of the day. Jesus, thank you so much. We're uh, looking forward to a meal together. We pray, Lord, that you would bless all the hands that have prepared it. Bless us as we fellowship together. And I pray that you would be with all these that have such tremendous needs going on in their lives. You have them, Lord, in your hands. And we're asking, Lord, that you'd bring the transformation, the healing touch that they need. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much for coming this morning. Hang around. We'll get the table set up in just a little bit, and we'll have dinner. All right. Mm -hmm.